Greetings, everyone. This is Associate Pastor Matt. I wanted to share with you some quick encouragement from the Word of God. If you don't know Levi in our church, I love Levi. He's such a blast, and you should get to know him. Sometimes he'll randomly call me and share with me a, a Bible verse that he read from a calendar or a book or from some letter he got in the mail. And sometimes I'll hear it and be like, yeah, yeah, that was good, but then I won't think much of it. But this past week, he shared with me a verse that I just haven't been able to get out of my head. It's Colossians 4, verse 2. It says there, to devote yourselves to prayer, to continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. You know, I heard a quote recently that a praying person is a useful person to God. Is that an encouraging thought to you? I love this analogy this verse reminds me of, the, the idea of being watchful. You know, Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy 4 to keep watch over your life and your doctrine. Keep watch over how you live and obey out the Christian faith and keep watch of your teaching. Keep watch of what you believe, Timothy. We should all do that. We should all have self-watch. But then also, in the book of Ezekiel, there's this idea of the watchman. We think of these ancient cities. If you've ever watched the Lord of the Rings movies, there's this person that's responsible for watching to see, you know, are the people or the things that are coming, are they good? Or if they're bad, I need to sound the alarm and warn people and let them know to be watchful. And we should be watchful over one another, over our church, our community, and over our world. But sometimes as we do that, it can be hard to be watchful for the things we should give thanks about. It's easy to be to just see the clouds of darkness, the ominous clouds that are pregnant with you know fear or uncertainty or hardship or we think of all of the injustice and all the wrongs that go on in the world every single day. Sometimes you turn on the news and in the blink of an eye we have access to stories from all across the world. And sometimes it just makes you want to be so sad, just all the suffering, all the hardship that's out there. And then sometimes just so mad at all the wrong and evil that is done in the world every single day. It could be easy to not be thankful, especially when we go through our own trials. That's why as we read through the scriptures, there is so much God has to say to us about trusting him in the midst of suffering. James chapter 1 says to count it joy, brothers and sisters, all joy, when you go through trials of various kinds. Romans chapter 5 says that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. What an encouraging thought. In the book of 2 Corinthians, Paul shares later in the book, a laundry list almost of all of these different difficulties and sufferings and persecutions and trials that he went through just up to that point in his life. I mean, he goes through more after this, right? But he's able to say in 2 Corinthians 4 that these light and momentary afflictions are preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. That these these things we're going through aren't even worth comparing to the glory that is to be revealed to us. What an encouraging thought. You know what helps when we're going through hard things is cultivating that thankful heart. This past week, I was reminded of the story of Paul and, and Silas in, in Acts chapter 16. They've gone to Philippi and they've planted a church there. And they cast a demon out of a girl who's part of this like fortune telling business. And so her owners are really mad because that was their means of income. They, they're, so they're so angry at Paul and Silas that they come and they beat them with robs and they whip them and flog them. And Paul and Silas are thrown in jail. And we're told there in chapter 16 of Acts, verse 25, that about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. People are watching as you go through trials. As the world is going through different things, how will you respond to it? How will you respond especially to the suffering in your life? And I love this story with Paul and Silas that in the midst of that, they're able to sing at midnight. They're able to pray. Even though their backs were probably 
an incredible agony and pain. Now, you and I may not go through that sort of physical suffering. Maybe you or I will. I don't know what God has in the future. But I do know that regardless of whether you're a Christian in Australia or Africa or Asia or America and all around the world, we have different situations for sure. No doubt about that. And in some places it is harder to be a Christian. But being a Christian in general, period, is hard. Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. This past year, a lot of folks have been more lonely maybe than ever before because of the circumstances surrounding everything going on in the world and in our lives. I want to encourage you. A lot of Christians go through seasons of loneliness and what we could call the dark night of the soul. I think we all have a unique cross to carry, and sometimes the road is a long and lonely road, a difficult road, a load, a road definitely less traveled. We don't naturally want to carry a cross, right? We don't naturally want to press into suffering and, and doing hard things and denying ourselves. It's not easy. We need the Holy Spirit's help. We need Him so desperately. But the encouragement is that he is with us. There are a lot of stories of faith. I think of Noah, all the things that he went through. His culture rejected him. They thought he was crazy. We think of even Moses, his brother and sister at a time, opposed him. Think of Paul. Later we find out that some people who had traveled with him, like Demas, for example, later abandoned him. And of course, even Jesus himself, his disciples abandoned him at the hour of, of his impending uh, crucifixion. It's not an easy road sometimes, being a Christian, but it is a, gr- a good road. I believe the moment we see Jesus face to face, the lifetime of suffering that you and I have gone through, it will, be, it will have been totally, totally worth it. Light and momentary. And so the encouragement, you know, I was thinking of when I grew up, uh, I had this prayer model I was taught called ACTS, A-C-T-S, Adoration, Confession, Thanksgiving, Supplication. And recently I've heard another one that I want to start using with my kids. It's CHAT, C-H-A-T, confesh, Confession, you know, I'm Sorry, and H, Honor, You're Worthy, I Love You, and A, Ask, God, I Need Help, Lord, I Need You, and, and T, Thanksgiving. God, thank you. What a great thing to cultivate Thanksgiving in our hearts so that when the dark night comes, whether it's a literal uh, dark night like Paul and Silas were going through, whether it's an emotional tossing and turning, you can't sleep because of this or that thing that's weighing on your mind, I would encourage you that in the midst of that struggle to find Be watchful for ways to continue steadfastly in prayer with specifically thanksgiving. We have a lot to be thankful for. This last year, uh, even this year already has been hard. People have passed away. Um, People have gone through many hardships and suffering in the world around us. There's a lot to to be sad and and mourn and, and, and be upset about. There's no doubt about that. But we have a lot to be thankful for too, right? God saved people over this past year. He's saving people this year. He's doing a lot of work in our hearts. He's producing that endurance and that character in us. He is changing us. It's a, he's doing that miracle over and over. There's a lot to be thankful for the way he is sustaining us and he's providing for us. There is so much to be thankful for. So I want to encourage you I know I need that encouragement. It's easy to bellyache or complain or or just see all of the all of the things going on and feel overwhelmed. But to be thankful. Most of all thankful for Christ himself. What a joy it is to know him, to have communion with God. Oh, the thought of knowing him. The joy of knowing him is worth it. So, thank you Levi again for sharing that verse with me. It's encouraged me massively this week. Be blessed, church family. Thanks for watching.